What is up guys? Today we have a very relaxed fit episode going on here at the factory. We're doing a couple of things to a couple of different cars. First up, we are putting an oil cooler into our RX36 ute thing that we have. So if you don't know what this car is, 13B out of an RX8 and an E36 that we've cut into a ute. It's all good fun and games here. So we'll be chucking an oil cooler into this and kind of talking through that and explaining a couple more things that we have to do to this car. We've also got Tara's RB25 R34 Skyline here that we put a turbo on uh, and currently we are modifying the intake manifold on that to accept boost. I'll walk you guys through a little bit of that as well and painting the cam covers and making this thing look all nice and schmick now that we know that the turbo setup works. So we've got a couple of different things going on today. So here in Melbourne we are back in lockdown and it seems like we're here for the long haul. Quite a few cases, the Delta variant, blah 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 blah, right? As soon as stuff like that happens, I kick into overdrive and kind of decide or try and figure out exactly how we're going to, exactly how we're going to get through this. No drift events, we're supposed to be drifting this weekend in the purple E36, which we're obviously not going to be doing. I was supposed to be filming a dyno video, which we are not doing at the moment. So quickly had to come up with new ideas on content that we can put out for the channel. By the way, I just released uh, a new music cover of me playing some music. So if you guys are interested in that, the link's in the description. Just a little bit of a different vibe coming from me in that one, but uh, if it interests you, check it out. So instead of obviously doing all the fun drifting stuff, we're here at the factory, still having a good time. Still staying positive, but working on the cars uh, that we wouldn't have an opportunity to work on. So that's what we're doing. But first up, I'll explain to you guys uh, the oil cooler install and the differences between the older oil cooler that we had in it and the new oil cooler that's going into it. Hell yeah. Okie dokie. Oil cooler. So here is the old oil cooler that we had on the car. It's just a, like a power steering cooler I think off a random car that I had lying around. I had this just uh, as a temporary measure while I ordered and got kind of a new oil cooler that we that would be more suitable for the application and we used this for our first drift day. Uh, the cooler was fine I think um, but it was the line that we were running to the cooler uh, was just rubber hose and that was not fine and uh, that split a couple of times whilst we were driving which is not what you want because then you lose oil putting oil on the track and all that stuff. Bit of a nuisance, so um, I learnt my lesson really quickly with that one. So I ordered a new oil cooler kit that come with this nice thick boy here. Um, so as you can see, quite a significant difference between the two. Um, has dash 10 AN fittings in and out. And then it also came with pre-made lines. They're so cheap these days, man. I think this kit was all up 130 bucks. Pre-made lines, which are going to look rad in the engine bay. Um, and then they, they go straight to the in and outs right here that would usually go to the stock oil cooler. So super stoked. Uh, this new oil cooler is going to be uh, more than enough capacity, I think, to cool the rotary. But it's really important with rotaries to, um, to cool the oil. And uh, it also come with, where is it, this sandwich plate. Um, so you can just run the oil cooler off that. And it all fits up on the RX-8 as well, which is crazy, so. But I'm not going to be using that. I did consider it for a little bit, but the line's are already right here. And uh, it goes nicely straight to the oil cooler. So what we're going to do is mount it up. Super easy. Slip straight in here. And we're going to mount it and bolt it to this bit right here. So I'm just going to drill a couple holes. M6 bolts straight in there. Boom. And then we're going to run the lines. Hopefully it all comes together super nicely. But as you can see, I've got the intake off as well, because we're going to be... Chucking a new intake on there at some point, not in this video. A couple other things to, to do as well, but just starting to tidy this thing up. Let's chuck this in. You. We interrupt this scheduled rotary broadcast to bring you some RB stuff. So, Tara's car, we turboed it, but we left the stock RB25 DE Neo intake on. And that intake has a butterfly valve that is in between so if you can see in here there's like a circular hole hard to see where my finger is and there's usually a valve right here that opens and closes and like allows the air through each half of the inlet manifold it's very hard to explain and then here's our like front bit here and the throttle body goes here so the air goes in into the three cylinders but it opens up and kind of allows the air to go between them and doesn't and I don't really know exactly what it does apparently it helps with the 
um, the torque buildup of the naturally aspirated motor, but we don't need that because we're boosted and it actually affects the boosted motor to the point where you can't actually have this intake on it and tune it properly. So Dr. Drift said, nah, you have to get rid of it. So what we've done is we've removed that whole setup completely. Uh, Was who's up there sorting my bolt box, yeah. drinking beer. Uh, he very kindly, uh, so we've welded up any of the holes, ticked it all up. We've got our manifold here. We've actually cut it, it used to be much longer. Um, and that, it, it's a really ugly setup, kind of goes over the cam covers, makes everything look gross. So we shortened it right up, took about that much off, which is quite a bit. And that bolts up to here, throttle body goes on. So obviously I've painted everything super nice as well. Um, painted the cam covers real nice. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that all back together and kind of see how it all looks, but I'm super pumped. So first things first, I'm gonna assemble the intake and then we're gonna go ahead and chuck it all into the car. Here it is all assembled, painted, looks heaps nicer. Still not as nice as the uh, RB25 DET intake manifold, but it should look a whole lot better. So we're gonna go ahead and chuck this in to the engine bay now and put everything back together as well as our painted rocket covers and kind of see how she all looks, but it should look a million times tidier. So very happy. Of course, we have a whole factory to work in and we're working outside in the car park because that's what we do, isn't it, Was? And make life well, hard for ourselves. Somebody's got too many cars. You know what I'm yeah, sorry. So many projects. Yeah, well, if you weren't locked down, you'd be spending twice as much money as that drifting. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Actually, the drift events are all bunched up. We're going to spend all that money really quickly. Real fast. <laughs> there's like eight weeks. I think the next eight weeks, there's like one weekend off where there's not an event. Otherwise, really? we're just going to be wrecking tires. I would try and act mad and sorry about that, but I'm not. <laughs> Alright, time for the intake manifold to go on. See if it actually fits. <laughs> After was cutting and welding wizardry. Yeah, it'll fit. Looks nice. What do you think? Yeah. Beautiful. Looks tidier. So we had to angle it up slightly so that the idle control valve cleared the cam cover. Just doing smart things. So it's actually here. angled here where we cut it. Lots of class, dude. Hey. How's your engine bay looking now? Immaculate. Gorgeous. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Good words. Beautiful. Good describing words. Thank you. And now it does better stuff too. So. Should do. Great news. Yeah, you're gonna poop pants when you um <laughs> when it gets tuned. <laughs> Intake pipe is further away from the the heat. That's nice, eh? That's nice. Yeah. Uh, cool. This is done. Time to start it up and see if the car still runs. Cross fingers. Otherwise, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. I'm walking. I'm walking. So as you heard, that didn't quite go to plan when we started it up for the first time. Turns out, uh, part of the intake manifold where they mate together um, wasn't quite sealing properly, but we have fixed that issue now. So we're going to take two of the starting of the car with the upgraded and modified intake manifold. Please work. Nice. That's idling nicely, eh? Yeah. All right. That's better. All right, this is the next day. We are at home and we're gonna take the R34 for a drive to the factory and make sure that everything is all good. But so far, so good. So I just wanna make some dosy noises. That's all I wanna do. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. So uh, let's get it. We're gonna go finish that all cool. We'll set up on the RX36. Definitely needs a wheel alignment. It's 
very hard to film and drive with one hand. <laughs> Pulling to the lift. Sounds awesome though. Can't wait till it's tuned. have arrived at your destination. Woo! Man, I love driving this thing. Woo! So sick. Hell yeah. Here's what it looks like under the bonnet now. So definitely a massive improvement on what it was. Here's a quick before shot so you guys can see just a reminder of what it was before. And this is what it is now. So obviously we've gotten rid of a couple here as well by shortening everything up. Everything just looks a bit tidier, but still a ways to go. This intake is gonna come S up through here, not come around here. So that's something we need to do, but heat shield's nice and on, rocket covers are black. Everything just looks a lot tidier. Car runs sweet, so cannot wait to get it tuned. So stoked to have that stupid butterfly valve thing out of the intake. Now we need to move on to the RX36, get this oil cooler installed. Man, look at this thing. Oh my God, Tara, you're so lucky. This thing is dope. All right, that's enough of the sand stuff. Back to the Mazda. BMW stuff. Time to put this oil cooler in. So just reminding you guys, we're about to drill these holes up top here. We'll put some bolts through. We can mount a new oil cooler and then we'll run the lines. Hell yeah, let's go. Cooler mounted. Nice. Nylock nuts. Nice Allen key head bolts. Perfectly centered in the grill so that it gets uh, a nice amount of airflow while we're drifting. So that worked out pretty well. Now we're going to fit up the lines and then now uh, we have to cut the other ends off because they just slip over these. We're going to flare these off. They will slip over them and then we'll do them up. And then that's the oil cooler fitted up with our fancy braided lines. So that's pretty rad. Booyah, there we go. Sorry, I forgot to turn formula drift off. Look at that. Living the dream, working on the rotary car, watching formula drift. It's a beautiful Sunday. Oil cooler is in, lines are in. Stoked on that. We've definitely massively upgraded with the, uh, the oil cooler, so really, really stoked with that. It will look super nice as well, tucked up, tidy in there and that should uh, keep our engine nice and healthy. So obviously now we need to start it and make sure that everything's all good and there's no oil kind of pissing out everywhere. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Plus, we wanna hear some rotary noises. You. Here we go. Awesome. She runs well, nice and warm now. No oil leaks, which is nice. Fantastic, man. God, I love this thing. Well, there you have it. The oil cooler is installed. This thing runs magically. Still a whole lot of work to do on this thing to have it to get it to where I want it to be. Uh, but as it sits, very happy with the oil cooler install and just a nice upgrade. I run it for a while. The oil cooler is nice and warm, full of oil, which is sick. I topped up a little bit more oil into the actual engine itself as well because obviously the bigger capacity oil cooler means it wants more oil, it takes more oil to fill the uh, actual cooler itself. So this thing jams for sure. So I went ahead and jumped on eBay. I ordered brand new upgraded coils. We've got brand new spark plugs coming, new spark plug leads, 
I've also bought the software so that we can tune this ECU and I've been uh, researching uh, a bunch of stuff. It seems pretty straightforward in, in terms of tuning to get the power that we want. There's also a valve in here that moves, kind of like the valve in the R34 uh, intake that allows more air in at certain times. Good for road cars, but I think because we're a drift car that we can actually forgo that and either delete it or make sure that it's open all of the time to allow the maximum amount of air into the motor. So we're gonna be mucking around with a bunch of stuff with this motor, but unfortunately there's not much fuel in the car at the moment, so I can't take it for a quick street drive. So I will do that in the next uh, video when we're working on this car. But as it sits, stoked. Lots of things to do to get it ready for the next track day that we take this thing out, whenever that may be. That's it for this video guys, a pretty relaxed video, but at the same time we actually got some good stuff done. Lots of awesome stuff coming up. Dyno tuning the purple car, dyno tuning Tara's R34, obviously working on the 13B, and then lots of debts and stuff as well coming, so I'm just slowly collecting parts on the side, so we're really mixing it up and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. Anyway, thank you guys, I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. You. Peace.